With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week we'll find out what they think about description saying that our democracy is dying in darkness as media companies close. My producer has them all ready and lined up. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Good afternoon, Cam. How are you this afternoon? Well, you know, I'm always good uh, when I've had a weekend away shooting. Excellent, excellent to hear. Oh, I've got some really um, interesting thoughts on this. Democracy is dying because the media companies are dying. Yeah, well, they keep telling us that democracy is dying because of the media companies. And I'm interested to know whether you... to know what you think about that and whether or not our democracy is dying or is it just improving somewhat? Okay, so let's let's use the the media company's own um, metaphors. Is is it the darkness, you know? This is the darkness. I would argue it's not. I would argue that it's the dawn of a new age of democracy. I think there's a very good... Um, number of sites and the RCR radio is just one of them. Look, this is the dawn of the new democracy. This is where people get their information now. And, you know, there are still people that slavishly tune into the 6 uh, p.m. news on TVNZ because that's what they've always done. But I be, I'm sort of detecting a bit of disquiet because there's so much pidgin English being spoken that some people are not even sure what the news article is about anymore. I call it Manglish. Yeah. Well, the problem that they've got is, are they the authors of their own demise? And, you know, while I feel very sorry for people that are uh, in the, the meat and the machine that have lost their jobs... I don't think that's very nice at all, but I think to a large extent, these media companies are the authors of their own demise. And the blame can be put fairly and squarely on the shoulders of the reporters and the editors that do the stories. And I feel sorry for the people like the cameramen and the sound people who who may or may not um, support whatever kind of point of view is put across, but... You know, I would argue strongly that the media companies in the last three to six years have been instruments of tyranny, repeating the um, lines of the government without even questioning them, without even looking beyond the press release. And I find that abhorrent. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, when Ardern was trampling all over our rights, forcing people to have medical interventions they didn't want, uh, you know, not listening to people uh, who turned up at Parliament and then sending in her stormtroopers to wallop them. The media were all cheering Ardern on, and that was an affront to our democracy. That was an affront to our rights, and the media were complicit in a government taking away those rights and eroding our democracy and then they wonder why we lost trust in them. You know, like you can feel sorry for them a little bit, maybe, but you know they've sat there smugly telling us how to live our lives for as far as I can remember and thinking they're the smartest people in the room, but they didn't see this coming when people like myself and plenty of others have seen it coming. And, uh, you know, we've been on the receiving end yeah multiple times, particularly me, from media that just attack because they don't like my politics or my views. And, you know, so my uh, uh, sympathy for them can only be found in the dictionary. Uh, (laughs) Well, the most interesting thing is it's not only trust they're losing in bucket loads, they're losing viewership in bucket loads as well. And those people are just turning off the TV and I think advertisers now are looking for um, places like RCR where they can 
um, pick a audience. They can advertise to an audience who's mature, who can think about the products that they're advertising. I think that the whole point of this is that advertisers are also recognising the fact that the media does not serve the general public. And not only is the trust being lost in bucket loads, not only is the viewership being lost in bucket loads, but I also think the advertisers are walking and they're walking to what I call the dawn of the new um, media. And this, I think, is a, is a good thing. I think that, you know, we are seeing now a sea change and it's little old New Zealand. And I think, to be fair, I think Melissa Lee has got to pull up her socks I really like Melissa Lee and I think she's got to pull up her socks and she's got to take out the stick and she, cause the carrot hasn't worked and the stick has got to be used on TVNZ and they've got to be told we no like way to- can you um, lose all this money. Well, the thing is, is that these media companies are all saying their audience has disappeared. It hasn't. It's just changed where it's getting its news from. Uh, or where Correct. it's getting its information from, and so Correct. they they the audience hasn't disappeared. It's still there. People still want news. They still uh, want places to go to to gather information to make decisions for themselves. But they also want to be treated with respect, and they want to be treated like Indeed. their views matter. And so the mm. the the media did cut their own throats because they. They t- they thought they knew best, and this is a wake up call for them. And new media outlets that respect the views of their listeners, uh, in the terms of radio or viewers, if they're producing video content, or or readers if they're producing written content. If you fail to understand uh, your audience, you will fail as a business, and that's exactly what they've done. Correct. Yep, and I tell you the other thing that really interests me. Now that um, TV3 and News Hub has lost a, a large chunk of so-called celebrities, which makes me scoff, but anyhow, let's call them celebrities, why is TVNZ paying such enormous sums of money for talking heads? I, I think TVNZ is in, in dire straits, and I think Melissa Lee, as Broadcasting Minister, needs to get in there and, and make the organisation ship shape. I think Radio New Zealand is not far behind. I mean, from my perspective, these companies have sat there smugly for so long and, and they're literally sucking off the taxpayers' cash. And are they responding to the audience? I don't think so. I think well, the audience is walking. Well, they've been sitting in their studios sniffing in what they thought was smug. And in actual fact it was stale farts. And and so <laughs> and so that you know they're taking big deep breaths of those stale farts. And uh and and, and they're wondering why all of a sudden the studio starts smelling like, you know, um droppings. Rotting fish. Look, it's the it's the old story. The fish rots from the head, and I can tell you I am damn certain that there's a lot of good people who have lost their jobs because of decisions made by senior editors and senior reporters about stories and the way to present stories, and that, frankly speaking, that upsets me. The thing that I think is relevant here is that we all want to hear an unbiased, two-side approach to any news story. We don't want to hear opinion. If you want to hear opinion, you listen to Cam's buddies. It's yeah. opinion. It's not well, news. Opinions are like um, noses. Everybody has one. <laughs> uh, I, I've got Lindley. I, I've got Lindley waiting on the line, so I better go to her. Thanks for your call, Miles, and uh, we look forward to talking to you next week. Well, have a good day. See you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. Well, it's lovely to hear from you again. Well, lovely to hear from you again. Hey, um, we mm. talked about News Hub last week. Of course, la- last week we also heard the news that TVNZ was shedding staff 
And uh, and I'm just wondering what you think about these claims that all of these media people are writing in the Herald and stuff and everywhere else, you know, wailing and crying, gnashing of teeth, the whole I like gnashing of teeth. It's a good biblical thing, isn't it? Na- gnashing of teeth. I hope they teeth. haven't got false ones. Yeah, and they're, they got- they're, they're saying that, that that democracy is dying in the dark. What what do you think about that, Lindley? I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you've got to say. Well, I, I better um, have a disclaimer of sorts first. <laughs> um, I am biased on this topic. Oh, well, that's uh, all right. No. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it's bad for democracy. I think it's better for democracy, and I think it shines a light in an area that has been very, very dark for six years at least. Oh, it's longer than that. And, I, it's it, It's got to be longer than that. I mean, I stopped watching the 6 o'clock news probably, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago. Oh, well, probably I, I didn't. It would be a lot more recent than that um, because I'm not really a tech person, although I'm learning fast. Um, mm. And, yes, I, I would watch it, and uh, it just basically annoyed me because I could see that it was biased. But <clears throat> when we had the COVID um, sessions, those 1 o'clock sessions, I watched one, and that was it. I couldn't watch another one um, because it was so obvious they were totally biased and pushing a narrative upon us Um, so I stopped watching it then Um, and then in more recent times I used to listen to the talk back on the radio uh, just while I was pottering around plugged it into the um, plug in the kitchen and had it sitting on the bench and the next thing a flame shot across the room and it went boom that was the end of that radio gone so I thought, well, this might be divine intervention. I'll go with this. And I threw the radio out, and that was the last time I listened to news talk. So I already wasn't watching TV. It probably helped your um, blood pressure. I, it, well, it did. I cannot believe how much it builds anxiety in you. Mm. And I just I felt so relaxed. I felt so positive and good once I got over the shock of not having it you know, there, because it's sort of company in a way. But it's bad company. Yeah, see, so, my, dad, um, my dad sits there with the radio going, and I ring him up, see how he is, and I can hear news talk in the background going, blah, 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 you know, all the usual rubbish that they talk. And I said, I said, Dad, I'm talking to you. Turn that off. He said, oh, well, I might miss something. Mm. Well, you're not missing anything if you're listening to those radio stations because you're just getting this homogenized, you know, watered-down version of news and you know people talking about it um but not actually imparting any useful information to anybody no and, and it was shamelessly biased i mean after a while you could pick it you know it was going to be an hour on um uh pensioners uh robbing the government of money you know and so on and so forth, and then the next hour would be some other political thing that they were just trying to, you know, drum up government support, basically. And the thing was, if anybody rang in with an alternative view, they were either really rude to them or they just cut them off. Yeah. So Um, I think that as far as the democracy goes, I think this is a really good thing for democracy because now we can get both sides of the story. We can go to other places. We've learned that. And um, I must say that the media have broken one very, very golden rule, and they still don't realise it. They've alienated more than 50% of their audience because they have declared and stood on a political and ideological stance, and people have not liked it, you know. And when you look at the election votes, um, they've lost that equivalent of people who voted for the coalition, they've lost them as an audience because, you know, you shouldn't declare a political stance. That's right. And expect to keep and expect to keep a hundred percent of your audience. I can't see how they never saw that. Yeah, I mean, if you take my show, right? It's no secret where where my political leanings lie. I'm very conservative when it comes to fiscal matters. I'm socially liberal, mm-hmm. though. I mean, I don't care who somebody sleeps with. I don't care what you want to call yourself, but don't expect me to call you that. 
Um, and, nice. uh, you know, uh, uh, but, but I have um, guests on my show from all sorts of political persuasions uh, and I just let them talk. You know, we, we don't have arguments. Oh. We just have discussions. And from those discussions, we find out little gems about these people that, that they wouldn't find out if I was hostile or brutal or nasty or, or any of those sorts of things. No, but I think the difference is that you're not actually um, pushing a government narrative. That's the difference. Um, and like I said last week, it's contrived. It's not even fact. And it has a goal, and the goal is to brainwash the, the listener or the viewer, mm. whoever it is. And that's the difference between what you're saying. I mean, sometimes uh, the, like they had one woman on the political agenda a couple of weeks ago that sort of got my blood up and I had to collect myself. Um, but um, she, you know, she, she got to have her say. We could listen. It was not supported. It was not cancelled. And yeah. it just left us to make up our minds. Exactly. You, you got... You know, on that panel, if it's the one I'm thinking about, you had Olivia on one side and this other woman on the other, and Marty in the in the middle um, with Paul, and um, you got differing perspectives. And if you you know say, oh, we can't have that person on anymore, we're going to cancel them, or we can't have this p point of view on this news story, we're going to need to stop doing that. Well, then you're filtering news and filtering information and. Uh, you know, that's not what Reality Check Radio is about. Reality Check Radio is about hearing all sides of, of an argument. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, a host has to hear all sides. It means the station has to hear all sides. And so whilst I might... That's um, correct. I might support Israel, for example, you may not, um, uh, or a guest may not support Israel. It doesn't mean I have to have them on my show, but, you know, Paul, who... Um, has different um, points of view to me. He may have them on his show, um, but we're hearing all different points of view from all across the, the spectrum. It doesn't have to be politics. It can be world events. Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm not on the same page as most people on, on, over Ukraine, but I'm not, you know, a big fan of Russia either. But at least we can talk about it without, you know, wanting to th slit our throats or, um, or, or slit somebody else's throat because they said something we don't agree with. No, and I don't know if you've noticed, but the, um, well, certainly the printed media, mainstream media, they have consistently pushed the Gaza side of that particular um, mm. up, uprising, or whatever you might like to call it at the moment. They consistently fuel the flames um, against Israel and for Gaza. Now, I'm only saying that from a perspective that I'm recognising uh, the narrative, I don't have an opinion on it whatsoever. It's a long but way away, isn't it? Yeah, and I know that we, we just never, we're never going to know, or a person like myself is never going to know the ins and outs of world deals behind the scenes. We're never going to know the truth. But um, So I don't get involved in it, but I can't help but see the persistent government narrative um, on making Gaza the victim state. Um, mm. They do exactly the same with the Maori people. They make them the victim state. Um, it's patronising. That, that's what I object to. It's patronising, yeah, particularly it's just... when we're talking about Maori. You know, Labour is the worst at it. They talk about Maori being uh, unable to make decisions for themselves, uh, and and that's why we need to have a separate health system because Maori can't make their own decisions. They talk about... Uh, you know, that they're uh, vulnerable people. If you tell people that they're vulnerable or unable to do things for themselves for long enough and hard enough, then it'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy. There's no enablement, oh, it's disablement. Yeah, it absolutely will. And I don't know if you know anything about hypnotism, but sitting and watching the 6 o'clock news, you know, you, you get lulled into a sort of a slightly um, lower brainwave state. Yeah, and they, you know, the experts behind the scenes, they absolutely know how to manipulate people emotionally and their lead-ins to their stories, to their images, the story itself and the wrap-up is all designed to sink into people's subconscious and they don't even realise they've been hypnotised. But they yeah. have. 
But my grandmother used to call, that, it, call it the idiot box, and I think she was right. Oh, you know, it's incredible. Um, but a friend of mine, she she has a, another friend who was a journalist and with a big newspaper, and he got what he thought was a really plum job with TV One. <clears throat> and when he got his opportunity to do his first big interview, he was really thrilled with what he did and couldn't wait to see it on the TV. And when he saw it, he couldn't believe it was the same interview. It had all been edited, um, rearranged, and this chap that he had interviewed um, came across as a completely different person, um, and he was so disillusioned that he w- went in the next day and resigned, went back to his job at the newspaper. He said, now that was in 1989. Yeah. And, and So but, that's how know, long it's been going on. I know exactly how they but, work in TV and even in radio. And, you know, in 2014, I just stopped giving li- I, I stopped giving uh, pre-recorded interviews and insisted every interview I gave was live because then they couldn't mm. uh, edit my words. And then all of a sudden I stopped being on the on the news uh, for those sorts of things because um, uh, they couldn't control what I had to say. No, they couldn't manipulate you. But they're masters of it. They're masters of manipulation. And um, and I see, see um, that media works alone, I think they said it was $700 million in debt. Would that be right? Um so they're going to rearrange or restructure the debt, no talk of actually paying it off. And I think that's one of the problems. It's the same problem with the government, you know, this business of running an absolutely desperately bad business model, uh, propping it up with borrowing money and just keeping on doing that and not realising, you know, that you're heading for the cliff. If and you tried those tactics with stop. Yeah, if you tried those tactics in your household and kept putting everything, your holidays on the mortgage, your boat on the mortgage, your new car on the mortgage. Eventually you run out of mortgage and the bank manager says, "Mm, we need some money now, and you go, oh, I'll just borrow some more, and that'll be no. Yeah, I know. They they couldn't run a household budget. I cannot believe, and I'll be pleased if you could tell me, how have they they continued to operate, that's MediaWorks, on a seven hundred million dollar debt, why have they not done something about it? it? Just kept on going. Can you answer that? Uh, stupidity. I can't. <laughs> it's the only answer, <laughs> really. I mean, you know, why would you? Why would you in you know put your company into that much debt and not pull the pull the pin on it? I mean, I guess they have pulled the pin now, but I don't think uh, TV three has ever made a profit. Um, They've just lurched from one crisis to the next uh, over their 30-odd years of being in business. I I well remember when they launched, I was lying on the floor in mum and dad's lounge and we had the TV on and that's what we were watching. Um, But, you know, I've never really been a big fan of anything on TV3 um, until recently, but uh, that's going to still be there because it's not news-related, it's just entertainment-related. But, again, I don't watch it when it's on uh, scheduled, I watch it via streaming because it doesn't suit oh, me right. to watch it when they schedule it, right? So uh, my viewing mm. habits have changed, but they haven't changed uh, in the way that they make or deliver these sorts of products. No. Well, of course, that's the thing with um, Reality Check Radio. It's so easy. Um, you know, I can go out and do whatever I'm doing all day. I can come home and I can look up on, on just one tap and it's up on the iPad. I can look down the list Straight of to the crunch. Um, replays. Crunch. Re- um, yeah, look up the replays, <laughs> hit the button and, and bingo, up comes, you know, the interview of my choice. Yeah. Now, that's making yeah. things easy for the customer, but I don't think um, the media know who their customer is. And, of course, in recent times, um, the advertising budget was largely taken up by the government, and I think they're still – well, I haven't watched it, so I don't really know, but I imagine they're still advertising government stuff. Yep, they sure are, and that's what Would I've that suggested. Be right? I've suggested that, it, what, that what the government needs to do to finish off some of these media companies uh, so that we can you know, have a clean deck and start again – is uh, is just stop advertising uh, with them for six months or so and watch them all fail. 
Yeah, I think they have to fail because, um, and I think it's a blessing in disguise um, what's happened. It's not, it's not very nice for the people who have lost their jobs and that, but um, it's been in the wind for at least a decade. They should have been able to see it coming. They should have been uh, looking, at, looking at ways to modernise their product with vision and purpose not helping the government head straight towards a form of almost fascism uh, in that awful six years. Yeah. Um, but that's what they did, and now they can't understand why they've lost their customers, that being the audience, in my opinion. Um, yeah, well. And then, of course, the advertising's dropped off with it, so it's, it's just a death spiral, isn't it? But I think it's great for democracy. We can get rid of them and not be brainwashed all the time on one political stance. All I, know, all I know is that nature abhors a, a vacuum and that something will uh, step in to, to um, replace that. Uh, who knows what that is? But let's let the market sort it out because there will be people out there that think that they have got a better way of doing something. And, hey, all power to them uh, if they give it a go. But what I don't want to see is I don't want to see the government propping them up with subsidies uh, or any of that nonsense. You know, uh, Reality Check Radio doesn't have any government subsidies. Uh, we rely no, on, well, I think on the it's generosity absolutely, of our listeners. It's absolutely right? wrong. Um, it's absolutely wrong to prop out a business that's peddling a political stance or a one-sided political stance. That's absolutely wrong. And uh, talking about democracy, that is undemocratic. And of course, it encourages them not to recognise the error of their ways. Um, I think that's a very bad move. Why, why should the taxpayer pay for them when they've run their business so badly? Exactly, and I agree with you 100%. Okay, uh, mm. Lindley, I think we've pretty much done that one to death, and we'll talk again next week. <laughs> Thanks, Cam. See Thanks. you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Good day, Cam. How are you? Good, mate. Fantastic. Got a little bit of a curly one for you uh, this week. We're seeing a lot of uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth um, in the media about how democracy in New Zealand is dying because they're all losing their jobs and going out of business. What's your thoughts on that? Well, it might be going a bit far, but it's certainly um, it's not good. I'm just really peeved that um, programs like Sunday are going to be no more. I really enjoyed that. I think you were one of the five people who watched it. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. I think so many people now just don't watch TV anymore. Um, it's like the newspapers, they've got the same problem. It's depressing. And I read today in um, one news that um, all the art galleries and so forth around the country are all in a state of despair. I told you this last year when the national government came in, they've got no soul. They're absolutely soulless. They don't care about um, our sort of art or culture. They're not interested at all. They're only interested in making money. There's only one thing on their mind, making money or not losing money. Well, you know, I, I, look at, I look at the arts and the amount of money that Labor governments pour into the arts looking after the lovies. You know, um, if you look at the Royal New Zealand Ballet, I think I did a, a, a report on that a, a few years ago. Um, for every seat that they sell to the ballet or the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra this, you know, that people pay, say, $150 for, there's another $450 of subsidies to make it happen. You know, And um, it's just ridiculous. We, we are subsidising uh, the liberal elites uh, for their pet hobbies, that is unsustainable. If they actually had to pay for it, um, they wouldn't go. The actual amount, they wouldn't go. Well, you may say that. I couldn't possibly comment. But all I know is that my favourite country on earth, France, has to build the best aeroplanes and the best train system, the and systems and the best computer systems, and they have the most wonderful art uh, systems as well. Well, yeah, but Europe's got a population that can sustain it. We don't have a population oh. that can sustain it. There's there's only a very limited number of people like you who want to go wandering around the most boring things on earth called art galleries. I'm not one of them, and I don't see why I should have to pay for it. Mm, tragic. <laughs> you see yeah, the I think point, you're right. right? I, am yeah. one of, I am one of the few. 
<laughs> yeah, there's not, there's just not enough people. Yeah, it's okay in France. They've got the Louvre, right? And millions of people go there. Well, millions of people don't go to the Auckland Art Gallery. It's just, you yeah, know, a lot, hopeless. A lot of those millions, a lot of those millions in France are tourists like me that go there to see the culture. Well, it is a culture though. When we're told constantly in New Zealand that that's not that's not our culture, and we shouldn't be, you know, wanting to see these things. We only are only allowed Maori culture, and and in their artworks, even more boring. I agree with you a hundred percent. There, I have to say, I'm not interested in all that. It's dragging us down. No one wants to see it. You're yeah, right. I mean, you know, there's only so many ways you can carve a piece of wood, right? True. But uh, do you think oh, democracy is, is dying, thing. though? Do you think democracy is dying, or is this just hyperbole from a bunch of whining, uh, woke types who have lost their jobs because they weren't actually the smartest people in the room and they didn't see this coming, every, even though everybody else saw it coming? Well, I don't quite agree with you there, Kim. Um, I think there's some pretty smart people in there, and, yeah, it is a tragedy. They're losing their jobs. And... I just want to come home, watch TV, and be entertained. And that ain't going to happen now. I mean, immediately oh. I heard that TV, TV3 was closing. I immediately switched to um, that channel. And there's definitely better news than TV1. And the only reason I was on TV1 is because I loved the chase. And I was too lazy to switch channels because it just went straight into the news. Well, you know, the the... the, the... The news that's on TV3 and TV1 is five days old. We've all seen it, you know, in many other different places along the way in the interceding days, and they're just churning out um, garbage. It's not it's not entertainment. It's not even infotainment. Uh, it's it's just rubbish, and, and then they put all their woke spin on it. Yeah, the woke spin I agree with you on. I can't stand it. I mean, that's the real thing, is that they've driven away their audience. They've driven away um, people like me who, you know, I live and breathe news, and yet I don't watch their, their bulletins. Why is that? Well, it doesn't suit. Uh, I get You're the greatest own. newsman in the country. That's why I hang <laughs> on every word you say. Of course you do, Jack. Of course you do. I'm not, no, I'm not joking. Oh, dear. Uh, are you just inflating my head? You know, all this smoke you're blowing up my, no, up my just, butt, it's inflating I'm my just, head. I'm just speaking the truth. I'll tell you one person who won't be worried about this is Winston. He hates the general yeah. media. Well, you know, while you're blowing smoke up me, um, I've got to say that you're the safest person I've ever flown an aeroplane with. So there you go. Oh, yeah, but you haven't been on that Chilean airline. Yeah. But, um, you know, we've got a couple of friends who have got planes, and there's one friend I will never get in one of his planes. Oh, we won't mention names. No, I'm not going to mention a name. But uh, I'll, if, yeah. if, if, everyone, I, if someone says been, to me, oh, I've can been, you go with Jack? I went, sure, I'd love to go with Jack. Unfortunately, I've been called by more than one person the most boring pilot they've ever flown with. Oh, so I don't know. I, I like your safety briefing as we're heading across the water. Oh, the seat... Um, the uh, life jackets are in the back, but don't worry, you won't need them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Anyway, your verdict is yeah. you'd like to see more news, but mainly that that's because um, you don't want to have to get up and change the channel because your remote control batteries have failed. Oh, that's being a bit harsh, Cam, but <laughs> you're probably right. I just see... New Zealand culturally going downhill. It's been going downhill a long while, as you say, this Maori culture. What is Maori culture? A bunch of savages trying to show us what the hell they did, you know, a couple of hundred years ago. Um, that's not culture as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know, And now we've got nothing. Well, that's the thing, though. Talking about Maori cultures, you know, back in the day you can remember Maori television was set up because Maori wanted their own channel with Maori programming and all of that sort of stuff. And then what happened is that it got established and there's millions of dollars in subsidies and everything like that that's going on uh, to, to keep that running. But every other channel, TV1 and uh, TV2, even watching the damn cricket now is is a woke fest with all of these uh, uh, Maoriified words like they call um, when, when there's a wicket, it's called wickety. I mean... 
It's ridiculous. It's an English oh game. I haven't England. heard that. Well, they do. It's all filled with all this nonsense. The news is calling New Zealand Aotearoa all the time. They're, they've got all this woke wombolism that's going on in there. Um, and so you know, why, are we, why are we funding Maori TV if we're getting it all on all the other channels? It's only good for one day of the year, and that's Anzac Day. They seem to have the best programs there. But getting back to the cricket, what the hell's going on? This shows you the state of, of these companies that that's on you know, television New Zealand. What's wrong with Sky? I pay all this money on Sky to watch cricket. Then I find that I have to watch it on TV, whatever. TV and Z Plus. One extra. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the thing, and I'm right? going, what the hell? They've got this guy running uh, around the field, and, and he goes, like when the South Africans were, where was it South Africa that was here before? I can't remember now. Um, anyway, he, he, he's a Maori bloke, and he goes up to Australians and, and, you know, different visiting ethnicities and cultures and everything and starts go, crapping on in Maori to them. And they're sitting there scratching their heads, saying, what are you on about, mate? You know, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you got, I know you've got to fill the time between overs, but, you know, I'd really rather listen to Mark Richardson uh, and what he's got to say rather than... Absolutely. Yeah. I'm 100% with you there. That guy drives me insane. Hmm. Oh, well, anyway, yeah. uh, I think we, we, we've we sort of slaughtered that sacred cow. I mean, they do make the best hamburgers, yep. sacred cows. But, um, you know, I think we'll, uh, we'll we'll come up with another topic next week. Thanks for calling. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Jack. Thanks for talking to me. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. G'day, Cam. How are you this week? Box of birds I was shooting on the weekend. Uh, There's nothing more fun than shooting uh, firearms and destroying destroying eggs at 100 metres and doing all sorts of things like that. It's, It's a whole heap of fun. Well, the worker trying to take that off you, mate, so you better enjoy it. Yeah, they'll take my guns from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> now, what topic have you got for me this week, old mate? Well, we're just going to carry on about the media one because last week we talked about News Hub and then, of course, subsequently TVNZ announced that they were going to gas 68 people or something like that, which I don't think is anywhere near enough. Uh, but meanwhile, no, we've just... had editorials and we've had – woke wombles writing articles about how democracy's dying in the dark um, because these subsidi- highly subsidised, going broke, woke media outfits are tipping over. What's your thoughts on that? Is democracy dying in the darkness or are we seeing a new dawn? No, we're seeing a new dawn. They're the ones killing the democracy and everyone's moving away with it. When they hooked their ticket to Jacinda Re- Jacinda's regime, they were the like the starting the end of democracy, taking the bribe money with strings attached. It's, it's fantastic they're going. It, it needs to happen. It can't, it's just not sustainable anymore. It's it, it's done its time like technology wise, but also the, all the people that go and be part of the mainstream media are all woke. Well, they all you think know? they're and the they're smartest just, person in the room, but they never saw this coming. No, and they twist stories and twist facts, and it's just. It's just everyone I know doesn't watch it anymore. It's just they get them their news or you know current affairs from other much more factual. Well, that's sources, the other thing, know. isn't it? Like the news that you see on TV and Z and TV three is so old. You think, God, wasn't that like three weeks ago that I I, I read that? Um, and it's so twisted yeah. and bent out of shape from what reality is. Um, you know, that even people like my father and no doubt your parents is, are starting to listen to more modern uh, methods of dissemination and news, you know, like uh, Reality Check Radio. Well, my mother has actually downloaded the Reality Check Radio app, as it be. But, like, you know, when I was a younger man than I am, my parents used to buy the newspaper and, and listen to um, New Zealand Radio full time. Like, that's just what they did for all my childhood. But now they do neither, you know. So times are changing. And I'm, I'm, it's, it's no surprise that you see the mainstream media dying. Look at what they produce. It's utter crap. Have you ever watched a press conference, like a post-cabinet press conference, say, with Luxon? Watch it live and then watch how they 
present it an hour, whatever, later on the news, it's completely different. It's like a different object. It's just not objective. It's just taken out of context, out of, and edited and twisted in such a way that it gives them a story. It's just it's fake news. They are literally fake news. You know, these people are running agendas. Oh, they are running agendas, so, a woke agenda usually. Like, you know, um, they're push, always pushing, you know, trans stuff or LGBTQ plus alphabet, you know, people stuff. And the thing is, is that, like, I mean, I, I know some people who are gay and they don't carry on like that. Um, and, no, I don't. Yeah, but, I, but, but we're being told this is all normal. This is what, what you know, New Zealanders want. Um, that we want, you know, um, men pretending to be women and competing in women's sports and slaying them in in the sports. Um, but it's not. Most right-thinking people or uh, centre-thinking people will think this is a nonsense. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, they they you, you can't speak it, up because both. then you get attacked about being, being transphobic. But, you know, I love that when they say you're homophobic or transphobic or something like that, I always say, well, I'm not scared of someone who wears a dress. No, it's just it's the same with the racist. You know, they just used the word racist to death, and now they're using the word genocide. And it's just it just takes away all meaning. And it's anyway, the media are, are getting the ass card from society, and I couldn't be more happy about it. To be honest, I can't wait for stuff to go down. That that's going to be glorious, and they will. Can't and they continue fouls. to be woke. They just don't get it. They just don't get it. No, they don't so, get it. They, they've but they. You know, the other callers uh, to Cam's buddies have said that they did it to themselves. They ignored their audience, yeah, they, they treated did. them with contempt, and then they wondered why we all walked away and went somewhere else. But, and I noted that the audience hasn't disappeared. It's just disappeared from them. Yeah, it's gone to other places. I mean, you know, there's a well-to-do station in New Zealand that's got a big morning audience, and it's it's not woke. And yet other morning stations like... You know, our national broadcaster RNZ, our work, and their audience are disappearing. And it's obvious. Why Why don't they change? Pander to the audience. That's what all all businesses have to do in the end. I, I just don't get it, mate. They think everyone else should change to suit their agendas and everyone else is stupid. Yeah, I'm hoping that the I New Zealand so. Herald um, goes soon after uh, our stuff because... There's quite a few journalists at the New Zealand Herald that I'd really like to see get their card marked. <laughs> I think I know who you mean. <laughs> uh, well, the Herald, the Herald's pretty big. It's really got pretty safe. It's got a pretty conservative boomer audience, especially in Auckland. You still yeah. see a lot of Heralds sold. Don't but know why. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe they're budgerigar fanciers and they need something to line the the cage to soak up all the like the, the fires. <laughs> or, or like the fire, even if you're allowed fires. I mean, if they if the government bans fires, the Herald's in real trouble, real trouble. <laughs> you know? yeah. And if, and, and no, if, if, that... if the Greenies decide that you know budgerigars uh, and canaries uh, uh, shouldn't be here because they're not native, um, well then the Herald's absolutely finished. Then I mean, the only thing <laughs> left is cat owners, isn't it? To put a sort of a liner underneath the kitty litter. Yeah, well, newspapers are pretty handy for a lot of jobs, but I think as, as the as the boomer generation dies out, you know, over the next whatever amount of years, you, you're certainly going to see more decline in in print media. I mean, who, who do you know under fifty buys print? Uh, stupid people. I, wouldn't have it. I don't know anyone. Budgie right. fanciers. <laughs> Besides budgie fanciers, no one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, cat fanciers Sorry, and budgie fanciers. Anyway, yeah, well, that's, that's my thoughts. Good good to see that. I think democracy is actually going to come through, to be honest. Of course it will. You know, this is the thing that yeah. these stupid media people – do you remember when Judy Bailey used to read the news? And then of, then she yeah. got the then she got the ass card, right? They gassed her – the mother and, of the nation. Came and she was told us that she was the mother of the nation, you know, and the news <laughs> will never be the same. And then the next minute they stick some other Doris on who can read a, a teleprompter and we promptly forgot that Judy Bailey. I mean, I had to look up who it was that had lost, you know, lost a job those years ago. I'd forgotten who she was. 
And, uh, you know, nobody talks about it now except us. We're talking about it now. Yeah. But, but you know, that's the thing. Well, she was from back in the days where we only had one state broadcaster, right? So, you know, one network news used to be half an hour long when I was a kid. We're going to go back there. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a good idea. Yeah. Just one front news front and some, you know, yeah, well, that's basically we're, we're going to end up where, I, where it was when I was a kid in the 80s, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, was... anyway, that's my lot, Cam. All right, Jimmy, thanks for calling in, and we'll talk again next week. Thanks, mate. Cheers. See you. Bye. Whoa, no holding back there. Plenty of truth bombs dropping. If only the media would listen. Sadly, they won't, and they will disappear. I'm so blessed to have such a great bunch of mates and new buddies to share anything with. They're so wise and speak common sense. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you, so connect with us today.